What's up, Noitic community? How's it going, guys? Today we're going to be uh, showing off uh, some wand farms. And uh, it's going to get pretty insane. And uh, the wand farms you'll be seeing after I show just a couple bare basics so you can understand what the heck a wand farm is. Uh, I'll show the, the advanced stuff, and they get pretty insane. Stuff that even the, the Nala devs themselves, I doubt, uh, expected to ever be a thing. So uh, hold on, just, just to cover the bare basics, uh, every wand... Uh, in this whole wand farming setup, uh, you'll see it uses Summon Taikasova. This spell right here is is everything. What this spell does is it will summon in a floating wand. And this wand can have a very specific... Uh, it, it pulls from a very specific pool of spells. It pulls from a certain pool of spells, yeah. Um, so here's the pool of spells. Uh, if you, if you want to see this, I'll link it in the, the, the description below. But uh, yeah, it's it's got some pretty good spells in there. Some ones that really had to highlight, like add mana. Uh, there's chainsaws. There's uh, there's digging, digging blasts. There's there's all kinds of neat uh, stuff on this. So don't uh, undervalue it. This is actually a really good pool of spells. Now it doesn't have every spell in the game, obviously, but it's got some very good ones. So let's uh, let's go ahead and summon in a floating wand here. So uh, th this normally has one charge. Summon Taikasova can be cast one time before it runs out of charges. Even if you have unlimited spells, it still only has one charge. Uh, the unlimited spells perk, that is. Uh, it still only gives it one charge. So in this case, we already cast it once, so it's at zero charges. So I'm going to go ahead and use one of my Greek letter spells to, uh, to allow me to continue to cast it, even though it has zero charges. Let's go ahead and use uh, Gamma. Gamma casts a copy of the last spell on your wand. So uh, as long as we have this as the last spell on my wand, which uh, I guess there's only two spells here, so if it's here, that's the last spell in my wand, uh, the Gamma will copy this spell right here. So when we cast it, we get a floating wand. Now this wand right here, we already have a general idea of uh, like what kind of spells could be on it because again, I, t I showed you this pool of spells right here. We know that it's got some spells from this pool right here. It, can, it can't be anything outside of it. So um, when I cast this multiple times, so I'm going to go ahead and cast it more and more because Gamma doesn't have a limit. I can just keep casting it. Each time it's summoning in a different wand with a different set of spells. So by doing this, you can summon it like by by you know continuing to press this, you're summoning in more and more wands. Uh, this is dangerous because these are actually not just floating wands. These are these are actually invisible ghosts that are carrying wands to make it look like the wand is like animated, right? Like the wand is coming to life. There's actually a, an invisible creature that you can't see that's holding holding these um, these wands. Now, most spells, if you were to shoot them. Uh, at them, they, it doesn't affect them. Like you'll see, I shoot at them. It does. It doesn't hit them. There is no effect. However, if I was to be, uh, if I was to step in some berserkium or something like that, these guys will will try to attack me uh, because they will view me as uh, like a as a threat. So they these things can actually be dangerous. So you don't see many people use these in an offensive manner. No, not many people summon these wands in and then tell those wands to go attack stuff because they're just too they're too crazy. They add too much variables of chaos. You don't know they may end up hitting you with something deadly. It's too dangerous. So what you do is you create a wand farm with them. And that what that means is you want to summon them in. You want to summon in the ghost carrying the wand and in the same moment kill the ghost that is carrying the wand and all that remains there is the wand so that you can take the resources from it so what we're going to do uh to 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 make this happen is we want to cause some kind of explosion we want we want this explosion to spawn right on top of the guys that are carrying the wand and the problem is these uh these it can be any explosion but in this case, I'm going to use uh, maybe the explosive box, right? So if we detonate the explosive box by uh, maybe casting them at the same time, like this. Actually, it doesn't matter the order, really. Uh, if we cast them at the same time, it'll kill these wands, and now we can we can grab these resources, right? So we can begin to... This is how you, you farm resources. You see the good resources you want. You say, oh, that's good, that's good. It's, you're, you're farming them off of it. Um, so... We want to do this all in one motion. We don't. You can do this in the beginning. Now, keep in mind when you first get a summon Taika Sova, it doesn't mean you have all these great resources. Know that this pool right here will have spells that will help you create some of these more advanced wand farms that you're going to see here in a bit. 
Uh, so don't think that like the moment you have summon Tykosova, you got to have all this other stuff. You can use summon Tykosova to get some of this other stuff that you're lacking. Um, now, uh, so I, as I showed you if I cast a large explosive box and digging blast at the same time, it just explodes. So let's go ahead and cast. We want to cast our summon Tykosova in the same moment that we're casting both of these, right? So um, summon Tykosova has zero charges, so we need to have Gamma. Gamma will copy the summon Tykosova, so we know that this will, will summon in the wand, and then we, we'll have the explosive box and the digging blast to detonate. So we need all of this being cast in the same at the same time. So let's just put a quad down, and then let's cast this and see if it's going to work out. There you go. Summon in the wand. The, the ghost that was supposed to be carrying it instantly died. You even saw it drop the coin, and I picked it up. And uh, we got some Luminous Drills. You can continue to do this as much as you want. Now keep in mind the only reason I'm able to cast these explosions and stuff and go unpunished is because I am explosion uh, immune. And a lot of time you're not going to be, you're not going to have everything just perfect. So you would want to put it on like a spark trigger. Something to to give yourself a little bit of range so that you're you're at a safe distance while you're, you're casting this shit. Uh, it, not, it doesn't work perfectly every time. There are inconsistencies sometimes when casting these, but you just spam it a bit, and you'll usually, you'll 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 get it going. Um, sorry, it's getting a little bit laggy here, uh, but you can see there's lots of wands. So see, see, some of you stay alive. You see that? You see how they went to attack a creature over there? That's that randomness that I was telling you about. That uh, you should be afraid of, and why you you don't like to leave the ghosts alive. Uh, but this is just getting the bare minimums, uh, and, and there are, you, it can be any explosion, so let's say we put down these uh, explosive, proje explosive projectiles, uh, double explosive projectile, we put it on a chainsaw. So both of these modifiers are attached to a chainsaw. This chainsaw, whenever I shoot it, you'll notice it has, a, it has, a, has an explosion that it gives off. So let's have that, and then we'll put the Gamma and the Summon Tykosova. That's another build that you can do that will, uh, sometimes it doesn't even summon in the wand. You see that? It killed them too fast. So it doesn't even give it the opportunity to summon in the wand. That can happen, and there are ways to like tweak it and improve it. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it's the order of spells. I don't know if this will help too much on it. Let's see. Yeah, see, no, this one doesn't do good. This order is bad. Uh, but it's it's just it's all about knowing the base core concepts, and from there you can just tweak the wand to your liking. Uh, in this case, I would probably just keep spamming it, and uh, even even if some of them are alive, I just shoot the ones who who are surviving, and you end up getting a lot of wands here. So. These are the very bare minimum basic wand farming stuff. I could show you, I could show you, you know, more explosions killing the the summon Tykosova, but I think you get the concept now. So let's get to the advanced stuff. Uh, the first wand that I'm going to show you guys is actually a wand uh, created. I think it was posted on the Noita Discord, and it was created by uh, Yust, I believe, was the original person that created it. And then a person uh, by the name of Nobby came along and uh, and made some improvements to the wand. So let's uh let's go check that out real quick. I'll drop these. We don't need those. Uh, let's see if I I, I, I placed I, I built it earlier and I placed it on the mountain. Okay, here it is. So this wand right here is one of those that I feel like got a lot of people interested in wand farms. It's not 100% necessary, and this is really just used for for long runs. But it's still kind of fun stuff. It's it's more for show rather than uh, necessity. So let's uh, let's go ahead and fire this off. Look at this thing. So what it does, and I'll show the I'll show the, the the spells and all that in a moment. It summons in a ton of wands, and it actually summons in a platform beneath them. So you can walk along. It's like a, it's like it created a shelf for you to shop from, and you're just walking along. And if you're curious where all that gold is coming from, that gold right there is um, is all the ghosts that died. They drop gold. And you're just walking along, shopping for whatever spells you're looking for. It's pretty cool, right? And uh, you can cast this as many times as you like, uh, and you just keep you just keep shopping. It's it's this one is pretty extreme. I mean, if you look at the spells here, I'll put it at the top so you can see it. There is quite a bit on here, and um, you know, it's not necessarily realistic that you would get this in a regular run. This would be some super advanced run, and even then, once you're at the point that you have all this, it's unlikely that you will. Um, it's a well. It's unlikely that you'll take the time to go sorting through all your wands, or your, you'll need them organized like this. But I do think it's fun showing these off. Usually, if you see me on my stream, oh look at these. These things are fighting over here. Um, 
if you if you see me in my stream actually creating a wand farm it's usually these very basic ones that i showed right at right at the beginning where i was just shooting at, at a wall or whatever just trying to summon in lots of wands and kill them in as quick as possible uh usually i'm farming stuff like ad manas and chainsaws uh mainly but yeah so this is uh this is the first wand farm that i'll show you and probably a crowd favorite it does lag a bit whenever you fire it because it's actually going off screen i mean you could see it there for a moment as it expired but uh, here I'll travel along uh, with my my teleport. But you can see that it goes for it goes for a good distance. It's not it's not too short of a, a wand farm. So you get you get a lot to work with. So let's go ahead. Let's show our uh, second. Remember that was made by. Look at these things. So many of those. These are the 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 shelf that you can walk along does expire after a moment. However, the wands that are floating there do not. But yeah, here are the spells. I'm not going to break down each spell and its role in it just because it, it gets a little extreme. Plus, uh, I mean. Some of these interactions are insanely obscure and would and require pretty detailed explanations. That's why I go to people like Latali in the community. He has a ton of these just logged away in his brain. These interactions and uh, it's just it's just completely unnecessary. Usually, if you're looking to build a wand like this or looking to to create wand farms, just throw it together and then you toy with it from there. You don't need to memorize each interaction and uh, and and like the results from like you know all these things together why certain you know why it flew in a certain way just get the basic core concept down and uh, that's what i'm trying to show there okay let's run over here real quick run over here do, 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 do. give me a moment so i this this next build i'm about to show was actually created by one of my community members his name is uh, qz and uh, it's a pretty nice one to show off because uh, I think it, it helps people th start thinking really creatively with these wand farms. The last one I feel like was like an organ organized, really cool looking one. Uh, this one, while it does look cool as well, it's not really organized at all. Like you're gonna wait. Which one should I throw down? Which ones? Are, I think I may have thrown down something else I didn't want to throw down. Um, oh no, it's fine. It's fine. I see. I did throw down the right one. So this this wand right here is kind of chaotic. And uh, in fact, could even get me killed. So let's hope that the video doesn't end with me being like, well, I'm dead. Because <laughs> that would be pretty fucking lame. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. So this wand, uh, I'm actually not even going to use gamma or anything on it. We're going to have one charge on our summon Tychosova. Now, again, if, if we had zero charges, all we would do is place the zero charge here and then place down something like... Uh, uh, let's see, Alpha, cast a copy of the first spell on my wand. You could just slide Summon Tychosova all the way to the front. You would slide all the spells over. So it doesn't have to be a one-charge wand. But I do want to show it like it is a one-charge wand. So you can see how much, how many wands you can get from just a single charge if you build something creative. And in fact, uh, QZ put down a pretty efficient one here. Uh, piercing, divide by two, reduce. There's not really a ton on here. But let me show you the magic of it. So uh, I'm actually going to summon uh, some rocks here. So we're going to throw some, we're gonna throw some rocks on the ground. These rocks actually play a, a pretty cool role. They will attack. Uh, well, they're kind of flying away right now, but they will attack the summon wands that I that I'm bringing in. Okay, they're they're not they're being kind of annoying. There we go. So these guys are going to attack the wands that I summon in. But what's going to happen first is whenever I cast the plasma beam, you're going to see that nothing happens really. Or at least not much happens. So yeah, it's just it's just sitting there. When I jump into it, you'll see that it begins to summon a ton of stuff. And in fact, if I can keep up with it, it'll continue to go. And I'll explain what's happening in a moment. But look at this. It's just summoning in tons and tons of wands. And it will go for a while too. Like, I can chase after this. I mean, these are all wands that it's, that it's summoning along the way. And I'll explain what happened in a moment. It's, it's still going, and it will it will continue to go for a long time. So this that actually summons in hundreds of wands. And remember, that was a single charge. That was one charge. This is a pretty wild wand farm that uh, that QZ threw together. It's it again. This one is kind of dangerous because you can do a lot of damage to yourself because you have to. You literally have to start off. It's like you know starting up an engine. You start up the engine by like jumping into it, pretty much. Uh, there, there may be some other ways you can come up with to, to start it up, but that's the way I started it, which is a very dangerous way. But you'll see, there's just wands everywhere. There's all those wands float. Look, look at these things. Look at them. They're everywhere. Very cool wand. Okay, so what what happened is. Um, Essentially, this plasma beam that I'm casting, so I don't have any charges anymore, so it's not gonna, if I jump into it, if, I'm gonna cast it again. If I jump into it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't do anything else. But what happened is, this add trigger 
on this plasma beam, uh, with well, I guess I should say the timer, everything is important. Everything's crucial here. It's making it so that this Taika Sova is uh, pretty much packaged inside of this plasma beam, where every time the plasma beam makes contact with something, like like it, it, it's delivering a spell, similar to a spark trigger, right? When a spark trigger makes contact with something, uh, the spark trigger you'll see will deliver its spell. Well, the plasma beam, when making contact, was delivering its payload, which the payload was a summon Taika Sova. Well, the, the plasma beam has a crazy uh, long lifetime on it because of the setup here, where it's just going to sit there infinitely. So, if I was to set in it infinitely, it would summon wands infinitely. But after you start it, start it up by jumping into it, you really don't need it. It's just, it's, it keeps going on its own because what's happening is it's summoning in a ghost carrying a wand. And then the plasma beam is then hitting that ghost, killing it. And then also by hitting that ghost, it triggers off another wand to appear. You know what I mean? Like it's it's almost like it's uh, replenishing itself. So summon a wand. Oh, it makes contact with the wand. Kills. I mean, summons a ghost. Makes contact with the ghost. Kills the ghost. But because it made contact, it summons in another ghost, and that that cycle just keeps going. That's why you saw that. I, I could I could have chased that thing for for a very long time, and it would have just uh, it just it just would have kept on going for as long as I'm I'm willing to keep chasing after it. And that's all because the setup right here makes the plasma beam have like a an infinite life. It doesn't it doesn't really expire. So. Um, again, you'd have if you wanted to make it summon in stuff, you'd have to go to that one that I cast earlier, or you would just go ahead and and put down something like uh, uh, Gamma here. So Gamma cast a copy of the last spell on your wand. Last spell on my wand is a summon Taika Sova. So I, I I play some rocks. So the rocks the the rocks are uh, kind of interesting. Uh, I'm not 100% in the role they play. I, I kind of toyed with it a little bit before this, but I think they're kind of kind of like the cleanup crew because plasma beam isn't always 100% killing. Like it doesn't, it's not like exactly lethal. Uh, sometimes it'll it'll hurt or it'll um, I don't know. It's just it, it's whenever I cast it without the rocks here, I'll cast it right now actually, so you can see it. Um, Again, I'm not the QZ is the creator of this one, so we 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 smack into it. Wait, what are we getting here? Gamma cast a copy of the last spell on your wand. Last spell on my wand. Summon Taika Sova. All right. Oh, because we're getting an interaction here with the ad trigger and all that. Okay. Um, I think we may need a wand refresh to pull this off. Uh, in fact, I don't want to dive into this right now. So this starts to get to it's some more advanced mechanics because. Hmm. Because we have the divide by two and all that, yeah, I think we're. It, it was better to have it with the one charge. It keep it keeps it much simpler. I think if we wanted to use the gamma on the Tychosova, we're gonna need to do a couple more tweaks. This is this is it gets to some advanced stuff. Uh, I I don't even want to show that right now. Don't worry about it. Um, that's for another video because I'm already I'm already looking at the timer. It's like 17 minutes in and I still am missing another one. I haven't showed off. Dang it! I sh I, I wish I would have pre-built two forms of this so I so I could have showed you the other one as well. But QZ is the one that big brain this one up. So it would have taken me a moment to toy with this to really come up with a tweak to make sure that Gamma can allow me to cast more and more. But it, it, if you were going to build that, it would make sense because why would you make this plasma beam be an infinite life if you're going to infinitely cast a summon Taika Sova? So it, it is kind of unnecessary. Anyways, let's, let's drop that down. Uh, the summon rocks aren't going to be uh, necessarily necessary anymore, uh, so we can drop them down. Again, those rocks, um, I, I think they have like a cleanup role. Um, I had messed around with it earlier, and whenever I cast it, I did have some success in, in getting like wand farming. But I feel like when the rocks were there, they were like massacring. Um, but yeah, I'd have to have QZ really break it down for me later. Um, okay, so this wand right here is the the final wand I'm going to be showing off of our wand farms. Keep in mind there are there are like hundreds of combinations, thousands of combinations you could build for wand farms. These are just some ones I'm showing off that the community created. I didn't I didn't create any of these. I mean, the wand farm that I created would be like the basic one I showed at the beginning, which is pretty much learning how to create a wand farm. That's you know that's not anything special. That's not like a you know. A, uh, a patented wand build right there. It's just something, it's a basic one. This one right here, though, is something created by Latali. And see, Latali, Latali is actually doing, I think, what uh, I was talking about there. See how he used the 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 wand refresh, then he puts the uh, Summon Taika Sova on the outside, then he um, 
he has the gamma down to copy the summon Tychosova. So this one will do a little bit like how I, I was about to show in that last one that allows you to cast it multiple times. So uh, let's. So this is actually a, another uh, two-part wand. It's got it's got two two wands that play a role here. So the first one here, we're actually gonna cast this uh, this crazy combination, and then it'll just start firing off like crazy, and it does not stop ever. Yes ever it will just go forever so that's why it's necessary to have this explosive detonator explosive detonator will actually just end the combination it like uh if there's if there are uh projectiles in the air and you cast explosive detonator it actually deletes the projectiles from the air whether they're like a spark bolt whatever like you'll see tons of shots all over like you could have 100 shots on the screen and you'll cast the explosive detonator one time and it will just delete all of them they all just vanish well this one right here we're going to start it up and it's going to start going wild and the only way we're going to be able to stop the madness is by casting the explosive detonator here so i just want to make sure you understood that the other the other ones are not necessary they're not playing any roles they're just my old ones so these top these first two ones are it um, one last detail about this wand farm that Latalia has built here. And again, these aren't necessarily something that you have to use in a real run. It's more just showing off cool wand farms. And get. And if you're out there wanting to create your own wand farms, it gets you thinking creatively. But this one actually uses Berserkium. And again, remember I told you earlier about... Um, about how if you could step if you step in berserkium wands will actually uh f you know these floating wands which are carried by these ghosts they'll actually view you as the enemy because uh berserkium changes uh their aggression towards you now we're going to step in berserkium to really get this wand uh going uh in fact i think if we just cast it right now straight up let's see if we do one cast so you, you get you get some action out of this bad boy but what's happening is nothing is dying, right? This is a bad thing. We need well, I guess some things are not they're not necessarily dying, but they're not getting their their ghosts are spawning and dropping their wands. Uh, now let's go ahead and berserkium up. And it's gonna be very this is very dangerous because berserkium is gonna make them all come after me. So uh, it's it's about to get super scary. But you'll see that once I do it this way, the thing does not stop. Uh, so I should have had some ambrosia on me. Oh god scared me. I jumped <laughs> It actually scared the heck out of me. Um, okay, we take a couple sips sips of this. We're gonna cast our wand again And now watch it watch this thing go Okay, I'm So it's just going it does it's not stopping I'm not sure if you're noticing the not stopping because the frames are just so garbage but uh, it's it's just gonna keep going. So I'm gonna cast the explosive detonator because the game is lagging to all hell. I think I cast that thing correctly. That it was just going so crazy. I, I was scared. Uh, but the berserkium is what's making it so that the uh, um, I I guess it's like a I, I don't know how to explain it. It's it, whenever I cast it before, you saw how the ghosts were just all kind of spawning in, and they were just standing there with their wands and stuff. They weren't really doing anything. This one right here is what creates uh, the death, the action, and all that. Um, I, I don't know if it's just a matter of them killing each other. I think a lot has to do with that. Uh, Latali had broke it down earlier, but um, I'm, I'm questioning some of the interactions in it. And I don't want to go into too much detail because I don't want to give you guys misinformation. But this one is, is actually cool, that, and I wanted to show it off not just because it's a Latali creation, because Latali creates some of the coolest stuff, but also because it actually added in this extra variable of Berserkium. Because uh, And I'm actually waiting for it to go out. Yeah, see, you see it, Berserkium runs out, and I, and I cast it again. And you just, you just see this, and it just spawns in the wands. Again, you bring out the Berserkium, you, you drink that Berserkium, and then and then you cast it. And that's whenever it's going extra nuts. So I, I, I'm not sure if it's just the wands aggression towards each other. The point is, you don't want to be uh, just in the regular player uh, aggression level. And wow, this is, okay, we need to stop this. This is lagging too much. So again, every time I go to stop it, the explosive detonator is the way to go. Yeah, some of these wand farms get so advanced. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I don't even know what the heck's going on. They're just, they're just crazy, but they're fun to show off so that the community knows that these concepts exist, so that you're able to creatively uh, come up with your own stuff too. So there we go. Again, sorry I couldn't go into too much detail. I guess we can just leave this run and screw it. Uh, too much detail in each one because there's a lot to know on these wand farms, and they get, they get pretty wild. Uh, it reminds me of like the 36 orb uh, wands uh, or boss killing wands. They're just so advanced that unless you wanted to do some super advanced wand science at this point, you usually just throw it together and you're just like, hey, it works. It does stuff. 
So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. My next video I plan to do is a heart farm. Uh, it's how to farm uh, worms that drop hearts to get, uh, I guess in theory, infinite health or until you get bored of killing worms. So see you guys next time. Deuces.